It's time for Rudy to finish his story. Hello, hello, Emmett Ryan here from Ball in Europe. And unlike our last video, which was done in a ridiculous rush, this one, and it actually was my birthday, which is kind of relevant because a birthday is being kind of part of this. Uh, this one we have in the lighting. I spent a farcical amount of time making sure I'm in focus for this. So if I'm out of focus for this, I'm going to be very annoyed in the finished product. Sorry in advance. But yeah, we're here to talk about Rui Fernandez, who's had quite the career arc. Today, his 39th birthday, which is when I'm recording this, but you're probably going to see this the day after, given how late it's going up. Rudy Fernandez, or maybe even the days after, who knows? It might be sometime in the future you see this. But Rudy Fernandez has announced he's retiring at the end of this season. He'll finish out at Real Madrid, the end of this campaign. And obviously he'll then try to qualify for the Olympics with Spain. They've got a qualifier in Valencia. And he's also got the small matter of hopefully playing in the Olympics after that. But we have an idea of when his career ends. But we're going to take you back and tell you how Rudy Fernandez had a story that frankly... WWE writers are jealous of in terms of the arc of an, any wrestler, which is of course a fake sport, artificial athletics, they are f committing fraud, they are conning you, would be jealous of. That is how ridiculous his career was, how the story of his career was so wild. And yeah, so let's get to it. No better place to start then. Well, with another guy we love on this channel. Seriously, how do I keep doing this? This is Emmett from after I finished editing the video asking you to please remember to subscribe, like, comment, share, you know the drill, really helps the site out, and tell all your friends. Thanks very much. Now back to what you actually want to watch. Yeah, so Ricky and Rudy was a show, and quite the show, for Juventus Badalona back in the noughties. Uh, they, together, great success. They won Euro Challenge, which is the spiritual successor, I would say, of the Basketball Champions League, although the trophy it has is more FIBA Europe Cup and its vibes is more FIBA Europe Cup. Uh, also won Euro Cup and also won uh, the Copa del Rey with them. But more than that, he was just this fun, young, exciting bowler. There was so much potential. And it was at a time when, because it's kind of weird to think about it now, people were talking more about Spanish basketball than they had in the previous history. Like Spain was becoming a force in continental basketball, but it still hadn't sort of, you know, captivated, hadn't crowned everything yet. Of course, in those early days, while he was still a Badalona player, he won the World Cup with Spain in 2006. He got that silver medal in Beijing, you know, he was, he was there and thereabouts. So he was part of the story even then with Spain. But he was this young prospecting guy and like that Badalona team... You know, looking back at it, like, kind of the two guys who came from it that we talk about the most, Ricky and Rudy, Ricky Rubio and Rudy Fernandez, like, two integral parts of the story of European basketball of the first quarter of this century, uh, truth be told. And it's because of sort of, you know, there was so much we expected from them. There were ways they delivered. There were ways things didn't work out. And there were ways they managed to sort of, you know, win over uh, the hearts and minds in very different ways. Like, Ricky, I think it's fair to say, was broadly beloved throughout. Rudy was not for large periods but it wasn't just that and i think that's kind of the badalona part is where the promise was there of what could this guy be what might happen with him and it sort of led us on this beginning of this wonderful wonderful journey of what will happen with rudy fernandez and of course it naturally led to him going to the nba where things didn't exactly go to plan. Like, it's kind of weird. I think Rudy was ahead of his time in the NBA. Uh, I think if the Rudy that went over... Um, oh, no, there's a, a big qualifier here. If the Rudy that went over then was going over now, I think he'd be a lot more accepted. That being said, I think he'd have also gone over a lot younger than, than he did back in the day. So he'd go over a lot younger now if he was turning, you know, getting draft eligible than he did back in the day, which would be a bigger debate because I don't think he would have honed off enough yet but like his stats were you know getting there is the best way of describing it like you know he was uh he had obviously had a bit of a drop off in his three-point shooting by the time he wrapped up but at the same time you know you could kind of see that sort of some things just didn't work out in the nba of the early uh 2010s just probably wasn't the game he needed to play and it's weird like cause there was times he got huge praise even from his own coaches there but more often than not it was like oh the, it was a classic Euro isn't making it, the Euro didn't do it right story. And that was the thing, like Rudy came home, 
very much seen as a failure in the NBA, even though when you look back at it historically with sort of the advanced stats, he was actually doing a lot better than he really think. And I think that's kind of part of the story is that Rudy was getting there, but didn't stay there the way he would have been liked. Like he wasn't seen because as well, it was an expectation as well with Rudy at that generation. Remember, like you had your Calderones, you had your two Gasol brothers, uh, Ricky was going over, um, you know, you had all these guys who were, you know, getting the hype and from this, these generations of Spaniards and uh, Rudy was sort of seen as not living up to that. And so when he came back, it was uh, sort of, you know, as a guy who didn't work out. But it's the next chapter in the Rudy story that things just get fascinating. So Rudy comes back from the NBA like so many players from across the continent have before. And obviously he plays better in Europe than he did in the NBA. I think obviously some guys don't really adjust as well, don't see that elevation in performance. Rudy didn't just play better though, he was balling, like he was going out there kicking ass. And he was doing so for, and I say this as a mark of respect to the team, the most hateable club in European basketball. And I'm going to have Real Madrid fans going at me, Emmett, I'm saying this as a mark of respect. You're the most, you are the final boss. Like, no team has won more Euroleague titles than Real Madrid. You're seen as, like, the gold standard of success across generations in this sport in Europe. And Rudy goes to what was already seen as a great team and made it even better. So... And before people think, well, what about Sheska? Sheska aren't as easy to hate, even though there's lots of reasons to, you know, see why people might dislike Sheska, obviously. Because you don't fear Sheska. And why do you not fear Sheska? Even though they're really good, always have great regular seasons. Sheska choked more often than not when it came to the biggest games. Real Madrid, you were never thinking a choke was coming. Real Madrid, you were thinking, mm-mm-mm, something's coming and it ain't a choke job. And that was the difference, like, Rudy went for, went on and he was, like, leaning into the villain characteristic because it wasn't just that he was balling out, obviously. If it was just, you know, haters going to hate me one thing, he was flopping. He was flopping hard. And he leaned into it like mad. And, of course, he was part of the dominant force in European basketball at the national team level as well at the time, Spain. Like, you know, they were crushing, you know, all around them for the most part. Around that time he was there, remember, he won uh, a Euro basket title, his third while at Real Madrid in that era. He did win his fourth at Real Madrid, but we're going to get to that in a bit. And so he leaned into this villain character, like, you know, somebody shared a headline from a French magazine of the most hated player in Europe, and he was. Rudy was the villain. He was the easiest basketball player to hate. And that's kind of where I go, yeah. So he could have stayed that way. Like, some guys who get hated just stay hated. Rudy didn't. And I think we all kind of know why. So Rudy uh, got, well, I don't, how do I say this? He didn't break, but he got more battered. You could see time hit him pretty quickly. And he had to adapt his game. And adapt he did. And like Rudy had always been an effort guy. It just wasn't as obvious because sometimes the effort went into flopping. Uh, but like, you know, the grit and grind Rudy that we got in his, uh, from I'd say from about, I'm going to say about 2017, 18 onwards is when we saw the real change. Because I think back to sort of that Real side which won with uh, Doncic, uh, won, the, won the early title. And, you know, the Rudy we were getting around those years. And it wasn't the Rudy who was like, you know, the give me the ball guy. It was the Rudy who was the workhorse guy. And this is where we saw Rudy just really just put the lungs in, put the effort in, and obviously carried that through as part of Spain's World Cup win in 2019. And it was very, it was a, like both Spanish World Cup wins were alike, but there were big differences to them. And the reason being, 2006 was a wow moment. Obviously, they were aided by the USA having lost in the semifinals to that great Greek performance, and Greece essentially running out of gas after that. But 2019 was a case of, you know, Spain were not expected to be in the conversation quite at the end, or other nations from Europe expect to be in the conversation at the end. And, you know, Rudy just was part of that story and made a big element into it. And it was, we saw this effort in it. And he wasn't like he was changing who he was. It's a key thing. He was staying who he was the whole time. But he'd sort of evolved for, into an anti-hero. And that was the thing. Like, Rudy had, was not looking to be loved. And that kind of made us enjoy him for being Rudy Fernandez, For being the exact same guy he always was. But having to fight harder to be that guy. And I think that was why sort of, you know, 
he just grew both in respect and in love outside of Spain, obviously where he's never really been hated, just to be clear, uh, at least not on a broad level. Like, I know Badalona fans still adore him, uh, like, going way, way back, remember, like, it's been, you know, 15 years since he played for Badalona. And, um, you know, he's, like, you know, done so much for the national team as well, obviously. But, like, he didn't have to change who he was to, to get loved and to become this glorious anti-hero. And then we get to, I'm going to say my favourite bit, which and maybe it's because I'm older, maybe because I'm 43, I'm a bit older, but we get to my favourite era of Rudy. Basketball dad Rudy. I mean, this is just, it was wonderful. Like, Rudy, I think, no, we've seen it a lot in the regular season of Real Madrid, but the 2022 Euro basket was the most epitome of basketball dad Rudy because he was no longer the guy for Spain, but this is a much weaker Spain roster than Spain had brought to any major tournament at any level um, in a long, long time. Like, for context, the last time Spain would have brought a team that week to an international tournament, this hair was brown and I didn't wear glasses, and I got my glasses 21 years ago. So that's a very, very long time. And you're going at least that far back to when Spain would have brought a team that, you know, with that little expectation around them. And Rudy was, you know, he was the dad. Like, he was the one who got, air, you know, on the court every ounce of the dudes around him. Like, you know, he was never going to be the star of the tournament, never going to be the star of the show, and never going to be the man with the ball in his hands more often than anyone else. else. And it didn't matter. You know, Rudy was iconic in that tournament. Like, he was just the Rudy that he needed to be. And he sort of has embraced this position as this sort of paternal figure for both Real and Spain. A role like Felipe Reyes has held before, uh, but Felipe was never as you know, outwardly, you know, crafty in the way he looked, shall we say, as Rudy. I'm not saying Felipe Reyes couldn't be crafty, uh, but I'm just saying he was more, you know, subtle about it. And that's kind of why we love him, you know? And so... And this is also why I sort of see the wrestler arc here, because when you think about it, he began as the young prospect, the darling of sort of the indie darling, so to speak. Then he, you know, was the big one on the way, who made it to the big leagues. Let's see how he does. Then he became the hated villain. And then he won the crowd anyway. He became the anti-hero. And yes, I'm going out of focus, but with good reason. He became the anti-hero, and then he became the revered elder. Like, you ask any pro wrestler to have a career like Rudy, Rudy Fernandez, they would take that in a heartbeat. And Rudy's all happened for real. It wasn't some script. It was how his career ended. And so the question now is, how does he finish his story? And the question is really should be, when does he finish his story? And I don't mean to, because of the qualifiers, but like, you know, for me, because I always see Rudy first as a yearly guy, I able to see the story for me personally ending. Obviously, for him, it's a little later. Will be in a Real jersey, because obviously the Spanish playoffs are afterwards. But um, they're best of five, so they're a little bit different. Um, I, my year league's ending for Rudy would be getting to the championship game. They're going to the playoffs for sure, obviously. Real have long been luck, and they'll be favoured in their best of five series. But I say going to the championship game, and I don't say what the result is, because I think either result is a wonderful career ender for him. And I know he'd obviously rather go out a champion, but if he goes out, if the ball is in his hands to decide the game and the last play of the game, Win or lose, it's an extra incredible story ending. Same goes for the ACB finals, which will be obviously a few weeks later. I'm assuming Real are getting to that, by the way. I just can't see a Real team with trying to win it for Rudy not getting to at least the finals. And then with Spain, well, uh, this is where I kind of get a bit annoyed because I don't see them in position to challenge a few of the top, top, top teams in the Olympics. They might get out of the, the, the uh, Valencia group. If they don't, that actually wouldn't be a bad place to finish because he'll get a very warm reception there. But if they do, again, wherever he goes out, because again, I can't, I can't see them winning uh, gold. And if they get to the final, so by hook or by crook, I think they're getting crushed. So I don't kind of, I really kind of don't want him to go to the final, uh, even though you know Rudy with an Olympic gold medal would be an amazing way to cap it off. I suppose it'd be a case of either somehow find a way to win the bronze medal game or really again a case of somehow he's in position late in a game even if it's the one they lose where he's the one deciding it i think you know that's it but for, for me again like the early the championship game seeing him get there if i was having to write this story i'd write it so that the ball is in his hands with a chance to decide how things happen but that's for the future
Rudy has a long future ahead of him. He's only 39. He's a young pup compared to me at 43. But uh, it's been great watching his career. It's going to be great watching the last few months of it. But um, I felt only right, given the, you know, emotional journey that Rudy Fernandez has brought all of us as basketball fans on over his career, to raise a glass to him. Rudy Fernandez, thank you very much, sir. Gracias.